again. I feel like by the end, you'll be tired of hearing me. <laughs> um, but I, I want to invite you now to kind of continue with me on the next unfurling of this conference. Uh, we started with workshops into talks that are now setting the stage for this keynote to help us think together about the social and cultural facets of our networked infrastructures. I want to begin by acknowledging this sacred land on which our networks will take place. Takarano has been the site of human activity for 15,000 years. This land is the territory of the Huron-Wendat and Patoon First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. The, dish, uh, sorry, the territory was the subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and Confederacy of the Ojibwe and Allied Nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Today, the meeting place of Toronto is still the home to many indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the um, in community on this territory. And at a moment when it seems so easy to see the way things are wrong, and with the hopes that we have at this weekend to hold and make space together for livelihood, solidarity, and survival, it felt important for us as organizers to take seriously and reflect on what it means to be holding an event in this present moment and here in the Great Lakes region and the settler colonial context of Canada. And while that still feels very much like a work in progress it is, and is some uh, type of work we look forward to continue, uh, I feel like uh, we have took some really uh, important or meaningful to me steps uh, for this year. I don't have a good segue, so I will just start my next paragraph. <laughs> um, Nick Estes, uh, Estes powerfully argues in his work on indigenous resistance, our histories of the future, um, drawing on and writing alongside indigenous studies and African Marxist scholars, uh, that there has to be an acknowledgement that we live in a capitalist society and we can't extricate ourselves from that, but at the same time we have remnants of non-capitalist and anti-colonialist ways of viewing the world. Thinking together about possibilities for education, forms of knowledge, and media that allow for that acknowledgement are why I am so excited for our keynote. So Jennifer, sorry, Dr. Jennifer Wemigons is Anishinaabekwe from Wiki Wemikon First Nation. She is a new media producer, writer, and scholar specializing in the convergence between education, indigenous knowledge, and new media technologies. Um, Jennifer takes pride in working to invert the conventional use of media by revealing the potential for indigenous cultural expression and indigenous knowledge through new technologies, education, and the arts. Tonight, her talk, A Digital Bundle, Protecting and Promoting Indigenous Knowledge Online, looks at ways to advance indigenous knowledge on the internet through indigenous protocols and ethics while demonstrating a profound appreciation for indigenous knowledge systems. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jennifer Wabagwans. Thank you, Don. Okay. Okay, miigwech. Thank you for inviting me here. I'm happy to contribute to our networks 2019. Tonight, I'm going to present on my book, A Digital Bundle, Protecting and Promoting Indigenous Knowledge Online. I'm turning on my timer so I can see where I'm at as I'm, as I'm going through the talk. Um, I'm going to share with you what indigenous networking looks like through the recognition of a new cultural artifact, a digital bundle. This designation not only identifies and elevates indigenous knowledge online, but is a form of resistance to colonial practices that would undermine and silence indigenous knowledge. A digital bundle then is not only a form of resistance to the state, but a new infrastructure for creating, for creating community, solidarity, for, sorry, a new, but a new infrastructure for creating community, solidarity across indigenous nations using our own cultural practices and protocols. I begin from the premise that fourdirectionsteaching.com is a novel cultural form on the internet that challenges existing dominant social configurations of power. The site does so by contributing to social and political transformation from the periphery of mainstream society through helping to revive the cultural foundations of indigenous communities. 
The online project, fourdirectionsteachings.com, was conceived to give expression to Indigenous worldviews through the teachings of elders and traditional teachers from five distinct Indigenous nations. They are Tom Porter, Mohawk, Mary Lee, Cree, Stephen Augustine, Mi'kmaq, Lillian Pitawanaquit, Ojibwe, Reg Kroshu, and Jeff Crow Eagle, Blackfoot. This online project, which I'm going to show you the introduction to, celebrates Indigenous oral traditions by honoring the process of listening with intent as each elder or traditional teacher shares a teaching from his or her perspective on the richness and value of cultural tradi traditions from their nation. So here is the introduction to the site. The American continents have been called the New World, but our histories as the original peoples of these lands tell us we have always been here, that we belong to these places which are sacred to us. Our collective memories go far back beyond what the modern world considers history. We have shared these continents in all the four directions for many thousands of years. To us, this is the old world, and there have been many nations here through the ages. Each of our nations has always had their own ways of life, with distinct beliefs and languages, economic, political and social systems, and medicinal, ecological and other forms of knowledge. Every one of these nations has its own way to recognize its place in the greater hoop that we are all part of, and all our diverse forms of knowledge lead back to that common circle. Through our various traditions, we recognize that everything in the universe is connected, that everything has being and deserves respect. We never worship the sun or animals or other forms of nature as gods, but we recognize that these things are symbols of mysteries that cannot be explained in words, and that they all lead back to the greatest mystery of all, the source of all creation. So through our stories and songs, we have always recognized the same ultimate creative force. Some of our elders still remember and maintain the foundations of our original knowledge. We believe that these forms of knowledge can help address urgent matters for the world today. Here we share a few teachings of elders from some of the original nations of North America. The Mi'kmaq of the Atlantic region. The Mohawk, or Lodnashoni, of southern Quebec and Ontario and upper New York State. The Ojibwe, or Anishinaabek, of the Great Lakes region. The Cree, or Nehiwak, of the Canadian prairies and woodlands. And the Pecani Blackfoot, of southern Alberta and northern Montana. Welcome to the Four Directions Interactive Teachings. So you can see that audio narration is provided throughout the site and complemented by beautifully animated visuals. In addition, the site provides free curriculum packages for grades 1 to 12 to further explore the vast richness of knowledge and cultural philosophy introduced in each of the teachings. This project was uploaded to the World Wide Web in 2006 and was inspired by my work in the early 2000s as an adult literacy instructor. The idea was that these teachings would be immediately accessible to frontline workers who often struggle to find appropriate resources on Indigenous knowledge. Access to the site is free. I pay the annual hosting costs for the website since currently there are no funding bodies specifically committed to uh, online Indigenous knowledge projects. That said, indigenous ontologies and cosmologies are regenerating communities across Turtle Island and reconnecting indigenous people with their spiritual and cultural power. My work looks at how indigenous knowledge online has had socio-cultural effects and how information communication technology affects relationships among diverse indigenous peoples and the flow of power between indigenous peoples and the state. Indigenous knowledge online is instrumental to the success of Indigenous community resurgence and radical application of knowledge in all fields, including education, health, law, and social well-being. In researching my book, the interviews conducted across Canada reveal not only the dialectical relationship between online and offline political action and engagement, 
but also how activists, educators, and frontline workers use Indigenous knowledge online to create, develop, and enhance their own work. Indigenous knowledge online speaks back to dominant colonial systems of knowledge in Canada by representing an active presence rooted in the local soils of diverse elders and knowledge keepers. The revitalization of Indigenous knowledge systems and practices are key to the movement of Indigenous resurgence and ultimately the transformation and sustainability of Indigenous communities. So to really comprehend the significance of a digital bundle, you need to understand that Indigenous knowledge is a complex epistemological paradigm. To better articulate it, I have pulled the definitions below from my readings of Marlene Brandt Castanello, Tayaki Alfred, Leanne Simpson, and John Burroughs. For example, I perceive Indigenous knowledge in two distinct forms, sacred teachings and personal knowledge. Sacred teachings consist of traditional knowledge passed on through ceremonial protocols. Only elders and traditional teachers who have been gifted the Indigenous knowledge and teachings in this way can share those teachings publicly and transfer them. This type of Indigenous knowledge is often considered as belonging to the community and held in trust by knowledge keepers and elders expected to abide by the cultural protocols entrusted to that knowledge. As a producer of Indigenous knowledge media projects and as an academic, I make it a part of my practice to articulate this distinction so as not to assume or usurp the role of a knowledge keeper or to disrespect Indigenous protocols held by elders who carry the Indigenous knowledge for their communities. In clearly articulating my knowledge as acquired knowledge and in recognizing Indigenous knowledge keepers and elders as representing the Indigenous knowledge protocols of their communities, I hope to convey the importance and significance of locating how Indigenous knowledge is respectfully represented in my media practice and academic work. The phenomenon of internet users searching for Indigenous knowledge online demonstrates the need for access to Indigenous knowledge and reveals the intentions, experiences, and perceptions of Indigenous internet users who intuitively navigate the internet with a complex understanding of Indigenous epistemology. The work in my book discusses how knowledge production in relation to the community, sorry, the book in the work in my book discusses knowledge production in relation to the community using the example of how fourdirectionsteachings.com is taken up by visitors who use the site and how the site came to be accepted as a legitimate source of Indigenous knowledge online by many Indigenous artists and educators and Canadian institutions and organizations that work with Indigenous peoples. It is important to note that fourdirectionsteachings.com was created and produced within Indigenous protocols, demonstrating Indigenous practice and implied Indigenous ethics in the construction of the site. So in thinking of this site as a digital bundle, we can see that a digital bundle represents a new social movement. Manuel Castells defines the networks of the internet as a new social structure that has transformed communication networks and socialization. These networks can be broadly defined as two competing streams on the internet. The consumption model, which privileges features that support commercial transactions and advertisements such as Facebook, Google, and Amazon. And the community model, which relies on communication features that support online community and public life. The community model represents an inversion of mass media broadcasting and publication by allowing a bottom-up alternative through the self-produced communication features of the internet. In writing about social movements, Castell notes that they seek to resist economic and political oppression and reject the political arrogance of elites. The ability to shape minds is the greatest power that one can have because, for Castells, it is harder to control through fear and violence when a large number of people are independently changing how they think. The loss of persuasive influence over people's minds 
is what arrogant governments and elite institutions fear the most. Much centralized institutional control is lost when alternative notions of social change arise independently. Ideas related to recognizing and valuing indigenous knowledge in education and community, build, and community building arise not from Canadian governments at any level, but from indigenous people who have been disconnected from one another historically. Although indigenous people have always striven against great odds and often at great personal cost to maintain contact with one another, and nothing can replace the need for real human interaction and knowledge transmission, especially when it comes to indigenous knowledge, the internet contributes to broader cultural movements such as indigenous resurgence by serving as a tool that ideally helps disseminate important ideas to act on and connect the minds of many more people than was previously possible. Castells is right when he notes that the most important thing about a movement is not the impact that it has on institutions, but what it does in people's minds. The concept of a digital bundle demonstrates how indigenous knowledge online contributes in significant ways to the movement of indigenous resurgence and thereby represents a new social movement, a new internet activism propelled and shaped by indigenous perspectives and values. A digital bundle a new social movement, a new cultural artifact, a new genre. In her work, Livro introduces what she calls five basic genres of contemporary alternative and activist new media projects. Culture jamming, alternative computing, participatory journalism, mediated mobilization, and commons knowledge. I came upon this work while searching for ways to frame my analysis of Indigenous knowledge online. Each of the five genres represented or presented by Livro is distinct and delivered in a particular way that can be inspiring and engaging. Indeed, her work inspired me to recognize that Indigenous knowledge online is itself a contemporary alternative and activist new media project yet it is very different from the genres that she outlines. For Livro, these projects do not, only refer, do not only reflect or critique mainstream media and culture, they constitute and intervene in them. Desperate to find out where and how fourdirectionsteachings.com might fit into this array, array of alternative new media, I reviewed each genre carefully. However, I concluded that none really fits how fourdirectionsteachings.com was conceived or how it works. Although aspects of mediated mobilization and commons knowledge projects could be used to describe the work of fourdirectionsteachings.com, that would be like trying to fit a square block into a round hole. For example, according to Livro, mediated mobilization relates to the domain of political, cultural organizing, and social movements. She further explains that it takes advantage of web-based social software tools like social network sites, personal blogs, flash mobs, and email listservs, as well as do-it-yourself digital media to cultivate interpersonal networks online and mobilize those networks to engage in live and mediated collective action. The Idle No More movement, an indigenous protest movement, might be described in these terms since it uses Facebook, personal blogs, websites, and listservs to mobilize community flash round dances in public spaces, and therefore engages in live and mediated collective action. FourDirectionsTeachings.com does not facilitate the same kind of presence in the streets. Although I appreciate Livro's discussion of the five basic genres of contemporary alternative and activist new media projects, none is an ideal fit for Indigenous knowledge online. However, I am inspired by her thinking about genres and how Livro applies it to activism on the internet. Indeed, it was her writing on the notion of genre that helped me to envision the concept of fourdirectionsteachings.com as, as a digital bundle. She defines genre as a type of expression or communication that is useful and or meaningful among the members of a given community or within a particular situation. 
Genres have both form and purpose. That is, they have typical material features or follow certain format conventions, and they allow people to express themselves uh, to express themselves appropriately and to achieve their various purposes or intentions in a given situation. As discussed, fourdirectionsteachings.com can be considered a digital bundle because it is a collection of teachings by respected elders and traditional teachers who have shared Indigenous knowledge in culturally specific ways. Hence, the site is a type of expression and communication that is meaningful to Indigenous communities. Livro also points out that genres have many other significant facets that make them relevant for alternative and activist new media projects. First, she writes, they help mediate or facilitate communication among members of communities. I fully concur with her on this point as I have found that users not versed in what constitutes indigenous knowledge are unable to distinguish fourdirectionsteachings.com. They cannot distinguish the site from folklore or digital storytelling. Quoting the work of Kevin Cronstone and Mary Williams, Livro includes their note that genres are useful because they make communications more easily recognizable and understandable by their recipients. Thus, she continues, genres are the means for creating and maintaining community and social contexts and cultural products of those communities and contexts. Moreover, she argues, genres can also be so, be so specific to a certain group's worldview or situation that outsiders may not understand them. So genres can also act as boundaries or markers that exclude outsiders and reinforce the power of insiders. Citing Crownston and Williams once more, Livro concludes that the recognition of a particular genre is one sign of membership in a particular community. In thinking about Indigenous knowledge online as a particular genre, such as a digital bundle, it is possible to see how such projects mediate and, facilita and facilitate communication among members of Indigenous communities. In fact, my book reflects the insight and participation of Indigenous internet users who are able to make specific distinctions regarding what constitutes Indigenous knowledge and who can therefore speak with experience and authority about its impact online. Furthermore, a genre such as a digital bundo only comes to life as a cultural product for the people who recognize and understand it as such, and therefore it speaks to the notion of a certain group's worldview, one that outsiders might not understand. For example, outsiders or non-Indigenous people might not understand or even recognize the impact of fourdirectionsteachings.com because they have little or no reference point for what constitutes Indigenous knowledge, and as a result tend to ignore and, and deny funding for such sites or projects. That said, I continue to write grants to upgrade the site from its original Flash HTML to HTML5, a mobile responsive technology. In its current state, the website is accessible to less than 50% of potential internet users. So far, so far fund, funding to upgrade the site has not been secured. Consequently, there has always been a tension between how fourdirectionsteachings.com is perceived and defined by settler society and how it is received and taken up by indigenous communities. Projects like fourdirectionsteachings.com are regarded as a sacred collection of indigenous knowledge that must be respected, cared for, and passed down for future generations, in many ways embodying the attributes of a community bundle or a knowledge bundle. Thus, the meaning of genre and its implication for insider community membership, as described above, are applicable and demonstrated by the Indigenous community, community members who were, who were interviewed for my book. That said, the time has come to elevate the work that Indigenous knowledge is doing online by naming it and providing it with its own genre. I suggest that a digital bundle is an apt name for this genre since it signals how such projects can act as boundaries or markers that reinforce the power of insiders, that is, Indigenous communities for whom the respectful protection 
and promotion of Indigenous knowledge online is of paramount significance. To change the appropriative knowledge form and the epistemological assumptions and social values that guide ICT production today, we need to stop positioning difference as alternative. To truly change is to adopt positions and discourses grounded in cultural knowledge that stand alone and, and apart from the dominant notions of media and, and consumption preferences for Western audiences. Indeed, Leach and Wilson recognized that the discourse surrounding ICT production and analysis is limited and exclusionary of Indigenous concepts and worldviews. In fact, they note an absence of Indigenous ICT accounts. For one thing, rather surprisingly, while global transformations wrought by ICTs are widely trumpeted, we have remarkably few accounts of ICT initiatives that have meaningfully privileged local knowledge and understanding. The reciprocal effects on the, de on the development of these technologies and accompanying social forms in different contexts remain underrepresented. In this way, I hope that my work can contribute to the ongoing dialogue that Leach and Wilson refer to in their conclusion. They say, quote, we consider an emphasis on ongoing and reflexive dialogue through making and use with people in all sorts of places and with different histories and imaginaries and can only, the end imaginaries can only enhance the positive subversion, conversion, and ultimately the development of future technologies. Back in 2008, I wrote that the internet has the potential to reinforce and reinvigorate without reinventing or replacing traditional forms of thought and ways of interpreting the world around us that are grounded in authoritative and once communally held sources and symbols. And so, like bundles that are carried by elders and traditional teachings, fourdirectionsteachings.com is transportable and can be accessed when needed and activated at particular times and places when alone or with a group. Also, like a physical bundle, so you can see I'm carrying mine today, a digital bundle stores knowledge and teachings and takes care of them through the process of adhering to protocols. Ultimately, a digital bundle represents the positive subversion on the internet by offering an indigenous history and imaginary that dares to challenge colonial ideologies by asserting the power and presence of indigenous knowledge. Projects such as fourdirectionsteachings.com show how Indigenous people are expressing Indigenous knowledge online in ways that contribute to the reflection in ways that contribute to the reflection of Indigenous ontology and values on the World Wide Web. The notion of a digital bundle demonstrates that online spaces can be defined and validated through cultural protocols distinct from digital storytelling through its grounding in cultural protocols, indigenous knowledge is a new kind of tool or resource and hence an opportunity to support the ways in which indigenous communities are decolonizing the digital. Thank you to the conference organizers for making space to understand what a digital bundle is as it speaks directly to the resurgence movement within indigenous communities and to our visions of solidarity and our survival for the next seven generations. Miigwech.